Welcome into another edition of the Gigum 24-7 Sports Podcast, a breaking news edition of the podcast on Saturday night. Papa Afua, Asendra Papa Afua out of Seattle O'Day announces his commitment to Texas A&M over Miami and Utah. Brian Peroni and I are here to break it down. Uh, Brian, how, how have you been doing? This is certainly some, some more welcome news on this offensive line front. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, after some struggles the last few classes, it's a land quality offensive lineman. I mean, Papa Fua, I mean, he's good, but he's also ranked really high. He's about 110 in the uh, the composite rankings that take all the services in. I mean, that's uh, – Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's really good. He joins – I mean, this offensive line class, what does it have now? You got Ashton Funk, who was the first come into class, but then, you know, Weston Davis is a pure tackle. Cohen Eccles is going to play center. I mean, that's a – yeah, that's a, that's a good class, and now Papa Fu. And then if you go and you get a tackle like Blake Ivy or somebody else, I mean yeah. that that turns a, a position that's been you know a little bit weaker lately into one of strength for sure. This is definitely going to be one of the the stronger offensive line classes that I think A and M has put together in recent memory. The Bryce Foster, Ruben Fodery class kind of yeah. comes to mind. It's probably the strongest one since, but the, this probably comes as the strongest one since then, and. You know, a big credit to, to Steve Adazio, Louis Adazio, uh, Robert Luce, everybody who's been involved in, in this recruitment. It's a it's a big, big win to to pull another guy from the from the West Coast. And obviously the Mark Naboo factor really plays in mm-hmm. there and, and a guy that he could be really, really comfortable with. But but this staff has been on him for a while. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the first time we, we really saw him was was at that camp. <laughs> Last uh, last couple summers ago, ago? yeah, what? Yeah, two summers ago, one of our favorite stories. Um, I think you were over there right at the time when when you kind of saw that all play out. Yeah, yeah, it was. That's the camp they offered Naboo at. I think Papa already had an offer, or if he didn't, he got it then. But I think he got it the week before. Yep. (laughs) So he he had just come off his freshman year, just a big kid, you know, baby face kid, and he's there. And oh man, it's just really hot over there because they were on the turf just real hot outside yep. you know he's from seattle and what he just <laughs> i look like over the fifth in the camp of, in five in days of, or yeah in the middle of drill he's just like sitting down and <laughs> they just, his shoes were off what is happening here like and then i saw henson look over you know josh henson was there he's like what he's like son <laughs> what the heck are you doing i still don't know why he had his shoes off but I guess they just them feet the feet were getting hot. This is hot, yeah. Yeah, you got a kid, a kid that's used to Seattle weather coming here to Texas. Um, you know, he was down <laughs> for the pool party, so he's had this record breaking heat, and he seems to be fine with going to Texas. You know, he <laughs> he's Texas. much more comfortable. It just took a little bit of an adjustment period, right? It takes. Yeah. A, and I mean, just, I mean, in general, you talk about attitude. I mean, he was a freshman then, and then you talk about attitude and just him. And he was a big kid back then. You're like, he's yeah. one of those kids you see as a freshman, and they're a bit over 300 already and you you start to worry you're like man is he gonna be 400 you know um you know the tcu kid brioni brooks has sort of gone viral again this week for yeah. being i think he's listed at 465 you're like is that his future but what you said you talked to our uh, our west coast guy brandon huffman and he's down some i, quite I, a I bit. talked to brandon huffman about it and he uh he's gone from 330 down to 275 and uh, what a good, what a change, and and it's certainly made a difference. I encourage everybody to check out. There's there's a story up there from Brandon Huffman about it. But he um, he looks a lot more nimble now, from what Brandon said, and now can focus on kind of putting on the the you know kind of the good muscle and and yeah. and getting into a college weight room. Um, but that's a lot of really good work, and it's really paid off. He's probably a guy that projects as a interior guy, but. I mean, could you swing him out there to tackle potentially at, and and let him go? Um, I think you could. Because even even um, Nabu, I think, is playing some tackle, a yep. little bit of tackle in camp. And he was, you know, a guy that was a pure guard all the way too. But, yeah, it just shows you that if you're versatile like that and if you've got a good build, which which he does, I mean, you can you can do a lot of things. No doubt. And I think the presence of Mark Nabu is – is kind of important in this one. And and it, it, Jimbo Fisher talked about this a couple cycles ago, actually, when talking about the East Coast, but I think it's starting to play out on the West Coast too. The comfort of seeing somebody that you know and that you mm-hmm. trained with and came on that that camp with um, two years ago, for him to be, you know, getting first team reps, kind of battling for that center position, battling for that guard position, I think that really helped Papa when it came to – time to make his decision and 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 have that comfort with Texas A&M and see 
one of his good friends yeah. along that offensive line. And, you know, for A&M, it's, it's really strong work again to get a guy out of the West coast. Utah was a big factor and, um, Probably would have you been know, in, in state, the, the in state and in city school, you know, Washington, you know, was recruiting him Oregon. So, yeah, I mean, he's willing to come to Texas play in the SEC. I mean, that's a, yeah, you just don't, you don't normally see that. I mean, Alabama may have recruited some guys from Seattle over yeah. the years, but usually they stay in the West Coast. I was going to say on the Pac 12, you know, RIP Pac 12, it won't exist <laughs> when they're in school, but, you know, usually yeah. stay with those, those Pac 12 schools. Um, yeah, and he, I mean, he did have Utah as one of his finalists, but, you know, was sort of A&M all the way, you know. And so, yeah, that's the, and, and yeah, I don't know if A&M lands him without Mark, Mark Nabu, you know. Correct. And yeah, is the Pac 12 going to be alive by the time we finish recording this I know, right? podcast? Yeah. Or is it going to be, got to, got to be the Pac, down to the Pac four? But no, and, and you mentioned this, this class that A&M's kind of put together. I think now as you kind of turn your page towards, what's next and and it really the attention seems to kind of turn to to Blake Ivy and you know they were able to get him back on campus at the end of the of the summer and you know that's that's a guy I know you you've had the chance to cover down in the Houston area um you know we've got the crystal balls in for him obviously for A&M um what do you think about A&M's chances with him and and uh, kind of where things stand uh, you know, I, I still like AM for Blake Ivy, kid from Clear Springs down south of Houston. He uh, he went to LSU for an official visit after the AM one. He's also looking at Texas, but LSU is probably the main competitor there. I know Florida really wants him, but, you know, he's not not all that interested in them. So I like AM with the LSU trying to, trying to turn the tide there. I think that he will probably do something before uh, his season begins. You know, that, yeah. that starts the final weekend. In August, I think he'll probably do something then. But even if he doesn't, I do like where uh, where AM stands there. They already beat out LSU for another offensive lineman of Weston Davis, and I think they do with Blake Ivey. And Ivey is, I mean, he's six three and a half. You think why is he so coveted? But his wingspan is ridiculous. I mean, he yeah. had the longest wingspan of anybody at the uh, the Dallas Under Armour uh, camp, and you know, that includes kids that are six 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 seven, and then. Uh, you know, and just he's so nimble and athletic. I mean, just so light on his feet that, you know, moves really well in pass pro. So, uh, you know, it's easy to see why he is so, uh, you know, so coveted, you know, by AM and and Texas and LSU and really every other school too. No doubt. And this, I think this kind of goes to the the point with getting being able to get Blake Ivy back on campus as well. Uh, with a guy like Papa Fua, who, as we mentioned, was in town for the pool party. I think this goes directly to – kind of the message that we talked about coming out of the pool party that guys are going to look to make decisions on their own timelines. But this weekend, that weekend is still turning out to be for the most part a, a real success. When you talk about this is the second commitment from a guy that was now at the pool party. I know everybody kind of likes to play the over under games when it comes to the pool party. That's now two guys fresh off that pool party experience who have announced their commitment with Houston legacy, uh, 2025 uh-huh. offensive lineman Joshua Moses, obviously um, doing so last Friday. Uh, you know, I think that's that should be noted as well that the the successes and the results from that weekend are starting to kind of show up a little bit. Yeah, I know everybody wanted to see the Terry Bussey commitment. Uh, I think you and I both really still like A and M. Where A yeah. and M stands there, he may take the official visits early in the season to A and M and LSU, and then uh, and do something after that. But still, really like where where A&M stands. And, you know, I think A&M is still pretty confident on him. Oh, going back to though, uh, Papa Fua, uh, yeah. this may be a chance for you to, I don't know, you can cut this out there if, if we're not able to do that, but to put, everybody's been wondering, you know, is there a huddle video of him? There's really not. There's like one game on there yeah. from his sophomore <laughs> year. Somewhere. But when I Googled his video last time, it showed, it showed up like his uh, peewee football. And that dude was <laughs> running back twice as tall and twice as big as every other, uh, as every other player on the field, a lot of leagues have a rule that you can't uh, you can't handle the ball if you're that big. But <laughs> that one didn't. So I encourage people, you know, maybe we can put some video over this of him just like trucking kids at running back, just running for long touchdowns. You know, it's like uh, in The Simpsons when Nelson, you know, gets to the goal line and makes a left turn to run <laughs> over one more defender and then goes goes in the end end zone. That's like that's what he did. So yeah, that's I, uh, I I think we can put that social media link in the in the in the bio here for for folks to kind of check out and, you know, dominating with his size. And, and yeah. that's, 
that that's that's the sort of videos I think people people love to see is just Mullen and, and oh, yeah, like I said, it really it really is like goal like line. Him. He's got when he was carrying. I think he was goal carrying line Bart. package. Yeah, I think he was carrying Bart, you know, down the field and just running into people, <laughs> and then he gets to the goal line. Oh, most of the goal line turns, runs over one more dude just to to go in the end zone. That's what that's what it looks like. So you know, maybe maybe yeah, maybe give him the ball like you said on the goal line here. <laughs> He's got a goal line package. We can, yeah. I think Jimbo and, and Bobby Petrino can, can make that happen. Heck, <laughs> get Steve Adazio in there, you know, and, and, and let him run, just give it to him once. Just to, let's just see what happens in maybe a non-conference game. Oh, yeah. So um, definitely a, a fantastic addition to, to the class for Texas A&M. We encourage everybody to head over to Gigum 24 seven. We've got plenty of coverage of the commitment over there. Um, a story from Brandon Huffman, more on the offensive line class as it's all coming together. And um, thanks again for, for joining us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get a notification. Every time a new video drops, just takes a, just takes a few seconds and you, and you won't regret it. You'll get a notification again. Like I said, every time a new video drops. So just go ahead and do that. And we will be back next week to talk a little more fall camp. We'll have Carter Carl's back on, uh, to give us all the latest on that on that front until then have a great week and enjoy the commitment everybody we'll see you guys soon